Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is John. I am the operations manager here at Elite Prep USA. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Jason Vanderbreek. He is our head of marketing and online communications. Hi, everybody. Uh, we just want to welcome you again to our webinar about extracurricular programs. And we have a lot of really exciting things to share with you. Uh, so I think we're just going to get right to it. So before we go ahead and uh, get started, I just wanted to get a little bit of a kind of a pulse of the room to see uh, where you guys are coming from. So if you would, please go to website menti.com. Hopefully you guys can see um, the screen here. Go to menti.com, either on your phone or on your web browser and enter code 139721. 139721. This is a, uh, a online anonymous survey just so that we can uh, poll the audience and see where you guys are coming from. And once you guys are there, if you could go ahead and hit either the heart or the like button so that we can see um, who's here, that's great. Awesome, so some of you guys are already engaging, that's fantastic. And uh, you could also just point your, uh, your phone camera toward that QR code, and that's another way to get to the site as well. So great, very good. So a lot of you guys are finding the poll, which is awesome. Um, and if there's more than uh, one person on your end watching this webinar, like maybe uh, you have siblings or if parent and student, uh, both of you guys are, are welcome to engage as well, but the questions are gonna be mainly geared towards students. Um, however, parents, if you're attending today, and your student's not able to join, then you can answer on their behalf. All right, let's get started with our first question. And so our first question is, before COVID-19, how many hours did you spend on extracurriculars per week? So this is a long time ago. We're talking about almost over a year ago. So if you can think before COVID-19, how much time did you spend on your extracurriculars per week? So go ahead and uh, answer that question. Awesome. So we're just gonna wait a little bit longer before we go ahead and reveal those results. I know it seems so long ago, can't even remember what life was like before the pandemic, but um, as we all know, so many things changed. Um, but before COVID-19, how many hours did you spend on extracurriculars per week? All right, let's see if we can get these results up here. Awesome. So we had a majority of you somewhere in the, the middle range of like six to 15 hours per week. Um, that's about 70% of you were about 16, six to 15 hours per week um, with a few on the uh, higher end of the spectrum. And some of you guys weren't that active in extracurriculars, which is fine. Um, a lot of times high school is about discovering what it is that you enjoy and um, how you wanna get more involved in those things. So that's totally fine if uh, you weren't spending too much time on extracurriculars. Okay, so now we get a sense of how much time you were spending on extracurriculars back then. Uh, let's take a look at what the situation looks like now. So the question is now, how many hours are you spending on extracurriculars per week? And by extracurriculars, um, it's you know anything that you do in terms of your clubs, community service, uh, sports, to what extent that you can do that now. Um, sleeping does not count as an extracurricular as much as I'm sure many of you are experts at that. Uh, so There's no sleeping club at, at these schools? You know, that, that might be the next uh, big yeah. extracurricular movement. We'll, we'll have to look into that. All right, so uh, as you guys can see, uh, it's very clear that even now, a whole year after the pandemic began, the extracurriculars that students are engaging in have been drastically impacted by COVID-19. And this is no surprise. Um, and this is something that is happening all across the country. It's not local to just wherever you are. And colleges are fully aware of this trend that how can students do their extracurriculars when 
they're at home, when there's a lockdown, uh, when they're limited to the things that they can do and the people that they can see. And we asked this question back actually in, uh, in uh, April when we had another webinar for extracurriculars. And I'll show you those results in just a moment. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna just ask one last question, which is right now, uh, or even in the past, which of the following do you do? Um, in terms of music, sports, arts, community service, or leadership, go ahead and share <coughs> what you do and check off all the ones that apply. So it's not like you're just choosing one of them. If you do all of them, check all of them. If you do three of them, check three of them. So how many of you guys play an instrument, do some kind of music, some kind of sport, art, community service, leadership. Wow, lots of leaders in this room, Jason. I'm yeah, look at that. Pretty surprised. Impressive. I mean, elite students do tend to be on that end of the spectrum, but uh, that's that's great to see. Awesome. Okay, so, I mean, even just looking at this small sample size, we can see that uh, almost two thirds of you have some kind of leadership position or experience, um, some kind of community service, do some kind of sport, and a little more than half of you do a music or an instrument. And the minority is actually visual or fine arts. Uh, that's only about 20% of you. And so the, the thing I'm trying to, to demonstrate here is that the activities that you do, just by nature of the types of activities they are, are going to be shared by a lot of your peers, right? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, some of my best memories from high school personally were doing sports and community service and leadership. And those are all traits that colleges are actively looking for and recruiting for. Um, but one thing to consider is that when you're applying to college, you don't necessarily want to look like everyone else in the room. Uh, in fact, it's okay for you to have certain things in common per se, but the depth of your activities, as well as the, the extent of your achievements and the uniqueness of what you're doing, that all plays a part. Um, I was talking to one of my uh, old friends from college. Uh, she's a high school counselor now, and she is a uh, reader for UCLA, which means that she actually reviews student applications and give scores about whether they should be admitted or not. And she uh, was the first to tell me that, yeah, by the time you get to application number 20, 30, 100, 200, all the students start to sound very, very similar. One student might be doing water polo, another student might be doing tennis, another student might be doing cross country, but at the end, a sport is a sport. And so the student that stood out to her actually was, uh, someone whose hobby was making garlic bread. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. You know, that's so random, right? Um, and before all of you guys start, you know, baking up a storm, <laughs> so the point is that it's okay to be different and it's actually encouraged to be different, right? Um, you don't wanna look like everyone else um, because then how can you differentiate what you're doing from what everyone else is doing? And so, that's something that we really wanna encourage all of you guys to do is think about how you can set yourselves apart because um, that's something that you really want to try to capitalize on later on. And so we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, so getting back to our presentation, let me go ahead and um, share with you guys. So colleges, they understand the boat that you guys are in. Really, they do. They know that your activities have been impacted in such, um, seemingly irreversible ways. Uh, and a lot of the things that they're gonna be hearing this uh, for the next few years is, you know, my team wasn't allowed to practice because of COVID. I was supposed to do research this summer, but I couldn't. My plan was to run for an officer position. However, my club stopped meeting. You know, there's so many students are in the same boat that you are in and colleges are not unsympathetic to uh, your situation. They know that what you're going through is really challenging and very tough. At the same time, they have a job to do. Their job is to take in the best of the best 
the brightest of the bright and to make their incoming class special. A, a group of students who are not only going to work together, but work toward the greater good uh, to make a better future for, um, for the next generation. Colleges are always looking for the next generation of world changers, right? And so even though everyone's on the same boat of COVID-19 and pandemic and lockdown, they're looking for students who not only made it off the boat, but found a new boat, right? Found a new way to pursue what it is that they enjoy doing and not just giving reasons for why they couldn't do what they were doing before. So that's my big challenge to you, which is um, something that uh, we're gonna try to talk about more about later about how you can do things to set yourself apart. So um, some of you may have read this man's book. His name is Viktor Frankl. Um, he is a psychologist, but um, he's actually best known for his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Um, Victor was actually a Holocaust survivor. So he was in an Austrian concentration camp, a Nazi concentration camp, and um, he survived. And from his experience, he wrote Man's Search for Meaning. And in this book, he talks about how everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms. And that one last freedom is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. In other words, even in the worst situation possible, man always has the freedom to choose their attitude toward life. Um, obviously, what uh, Viktor Frankl went through is magnitudes, magnitudes upon magnitudes um, more tragic and severe than what we're going through right now. But the lesson is the same. The application is the same. Um, even though so many things have been affected by the pandemic, you still have the choice. You still have the choice to choose your attitude toward the situation. You may not be able to choose the, cir the circumstance or change the circumstance, but you can choose your mindset. And that's something I want to encourage you all, which is mindset is more important than having a set mind or mindset overcomes set minds. So if your mind is just set saying, you know what, I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, COVID-19 made me not be able to do this. Try to have a greater mindset, a mindset of, well, what can I do? Uh, what can I achieve? That's something that we really want to encourage all of you to do. Um, so that's really what we're going to talk about today. And uh, just to kind of kick off with uh, a little humor, in a world full of princesses, dare to be Batman, right? As you're applying to UCLA with 100,000 other students, all trying to vie for those uh, few spots that they have, um, don't be afraid to be Batman. Don't be afraid to be different. Stand out, because when you stand out in your activities, in your extracurriculars, uh, it helps them to get a better sense of who you are, and it makes you more memorable. Um, and so uh, we're going to show you guys some programs, some really exciting programs that Elite has created uh, uh, just to be able to give students tangible outlets for their passions and their interests. And uh, that's what we're going to uh, talk about today. So if you go to our website, um, obviously, you know that we have uh, SAT programs and test prep and winter boot camp is starting next week for those of you guys who will be joining us. Um, but we also have extracurriculars. So when you have time, go to the extracurriculars tab. We have a whole page full of exciting extracurricular programs. And that's really what we're going to talk about uh, for the rest of this webinar, which is what are all the different programs that Elite has created. And keep in mind, we created these programs knowing what our students' interests are, knowing what their passions are. And you could say, more importantly, what it is that colleges are looking for. Because so many students can say, oh, I want to go into business, or, oh, I want to go into coding, or I want to go into the arts. But what do colleges actually look for in students who have those interests, who have those um, passions, right? It's one thing to tell colleges that you're interested in X, Y, and Z, and it's a whole other thing to show them. And that's really what we're trying to do with our programs, 
is giving you ways to show colleges in very unique and powerful ways that what you say you're interested in is real. And so um, I'm gonna actually turn it over to uh, my, uh, my colleague, uh, Jason, and he's going to share about the first of, uh, we have, I think, eight programs lined up that we're just gonna run quickly through. Uh, we're not gonna spend too much time on, uh, on each of these programs because you could always go to our website to learn more, but we thought it'd be helpful to just talk about it and show you some of the things that students have created so you can get a better idea. Yes, thank you very much, John. Excellent. Um, yeah, and I think we'll this this probably should shouldn't go much longer than 30, 45 minutes, something like that. So we'll try and try and end it on the hour if we can. Um, but uh, yes, uh, just to share with you a few of the programs that we're we're now offering through um, uh, Lead and CFGL. Um, the, the first of which is our research proposal program. This is actually one of the, the first extracurricular programs we began offering a few months ago. And it's been it's proven to be one of our most popular extracurricular activities over the last few months. So this is a program that is uh, designed for juniors and seniors. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity to learn and develop research skills in preparation for college. Um, which is something you may have sort of dipped a toe into in, in high school, but something that will absolutely uh, be, be of utmost importance uh, throughout your college career. So in this program, uh, students meet with Dr. Barron, who's a, a UC Berkeley, NYU, and Washington University in St. Louis graduate. So pretty impressive credentials uh, for Dr. Barron. He works with students um, in groups and individually to teach them about research methods and develop how to develop their own college level research proposals. So students, if you participate in this program, you're gonna have the opportunity to choose a research topic that's specifically related to your college major selection. So if you're interested in the use of stem cells in wound care or uh, the relationship of a traditional Chinese diet and hypertension, um, you'll be able to create a real college level research proposal on that topic. Um, and that's gonna be a wonderful and really impressive addition to your college application. Um, basically this program allows you to uh, express your interest in, um, in the areas of study that are related to your major. Um, it uh, demonstrates your ability to research significant topics uh, it shows colleges your intellectual curiosity, and it lets you gain valuable experience to write about in your college essays. Um, but by the way, this is going to hold true for all of the extracurricular activities we talk about today. But if you're concerned, if you're one of the, we can tell you from experience, the many, many students who are, you know, a juniors or uh, even, you know, next year seniors saying, I don't know what I'm going to write about in, in my college apps. Um, get involved, uh, get involved in one of these programs, have new experiences, seek out things outside your comfort zone, take part in a program like one of these lead extracurriculars, and you are bound to generate new interests and new experiences and new topics are going to pop up that will uh, become fascinating to you. And that's just the type of things that colleges are looking for. Um, so perhaps most importantly, the research proposal program is going to help you build important skills that many college freshmen uh, don't have. So you're gonna be ahead of the game um, when you're in college and when other students are trying to figure out the basics of how to put together a proposal, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be mile, miles ahead. You'll be, you'll be teaching them. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of a, let me see if I can show you a couple of examples of uh, yeah, are you able to see this, John? Yes, we can, thank you. Great, excellent, yes. So this is an example of what one of our students uh, put together as a research proposal, uh, the influence of classical Greece and the Greek word pneuma on identifying S uh, pneumoniae. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Um, abstract, research questions, literary review with different topics, archaic Greece, classical Greece, um, let me pull up another one just to give you a little variety. There, just what I was talking about, hypertension and a traditional Chinese diet. Um, let me just scroll through here and, and all the way at the end, you know, you've got these uh, carefully 
uh, presented references. Um, another medical topic, membrane computing on skin cancer progression. Um, so these are examples of proposals that students have produced with the help of Dr. Byrne in uh, previous sessions. Now, by the way, uh, if you're looking at membrane computing on skin cancer progression or a comparison of placenta-derived uh, mesenchymal stem cells with and without extracellular matrix scaffolds, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. If that sounds very uh, academic, that's because it is. Uh, these, are, these are academic, scholarly, college-level research proposals exactly the types of evidence of scholarly thinking and advanced level academic work that colleges are are looking for in prospective students. So um, uh, we are going to come away from this program. Uh, you're going to come away from this program uh, with a completed research proposal. Uh, you are going to uh, receive an official uh, certificate of completion. And uh, you're going to get, you're going to build strong uh, research proposal creation skills and, and strong writing skills. And by the way, that is kind of the only prerequisite for this. Uh, this is open to students who already do have relatively strong writing skills. Uh, if that's something you really struggle with, this might not be the program for you. But um, if that's something you're interested in and comes natural to you uh, and you're a junior, great. We'd love to have you. Uh, no prior research experience is necessary for this. Now, we've got a program that's another, the, the winter break session of our research proposal program starts on Monday. Um, and I believe, John, is this the one that we have just a couple spots left for? Or? Actually, most of the ones starting next week, there's uh, only a few spots, but yeah, this one has, I think, two seats. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yes. So two seats left on, uh, for, for this winter break program that's happening over the uh, two weeks of winter break from December 21 through January 2. However, uh, by the way, if you'd like to get in on that, please uh, give us a call. Uh, we'd, we'd love to have you. Um, you can call 949-654-8523 if you want to get in on that. Uh, or if you'd rather do it a little bit later, this is a program we're going to be offering regularly. Um, kind of, I believe, on a monthly basis. So the next session does start on February 2 and goes through March 20. Uh, we'll have another session starting in March. Uh, but give us a call uh, or for any of these programs, if you're interested in any of them, just go to eliteprep.com, click on that extracurriculars tab up in the uh, top menu, choose the choose the program that you want. And then at the bottom of the page, first of all, you'll be able to learn more about the program. And then at the bottom of the page, you'll be able to fill out uh, a form where someone will get back to you as soon as possible. So that's research proposal program. Uh, anything you'd like to add about, about that program, John? No, that was great. Thanks, Jason. Excellent. All right. Uh, next up, another program that's starting really soon on Monday, uh, but we will be offering more of in the future is our Fundamentals of Investing program. We actually did a, a webinar on this just uh, what a week and a half ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this program has been enormously popular. We've gotten so much interest in it uh, because it's pretty unique as far as uh, extracurricular programs for high school students go. Uh, this is for any students in high school, grades nine through 12. Uh, Fundamentals of Investing is taught by Dr. David Berger. Uh, he holds a PhD in economics from UC Berkeley and bachelor's degrees in math and economics from the University of Chicago. So again, uh, very impressive credentials from Dr. Berger. Uh, in this program, you'll learn about the tools and techniques used by investors uh, to evaluate a company in order to decide whether to buy or sell shares, basically how to invest uh, in the stock market. Um, and even more, students will put that knowledge into action by participating in a stock pitch competition, uh, which basically means you're going to work, you're going to select a company, an existing actual company to analyze and then make a recommendation about whether to buy, sell, or hold shares in that company. So you're going to work, you're going to collaborate, work in small teams, and uh, develop a presentation that explains the business of the publicly traded company in the form of a recommendation or what we're calling a pitch uh, to justify your, your forecasts for their business success or lack of success, and then present that valuation to a panel of judges who are actual 
investors, investment professionals who are then going to select the winners. So this is a completely unique opportunity, uh, very exciting. And I can't wait uh, to, to see how this, uh, this winter break program goes. Um, this is ideal for if you've got a student or if you are a student who, you know, you've got ambitions to be an entrepreneur, you want to start your own thing, you want to uh, do that. Or if you're considering a business uh, or career in business finance or accounting, this is an absolutely perfect program for you. Uh, you're going to leave the program having learned how to analyze a company and make investment recommendations. Uh, you're going to have the chance to win an exclusive competition, the stock pitch competition, um, and be able to, you know, put that on your on your resume uh, with your college applications. And of course, uh, you'll get that certificate of achievement. Uh, so super exciting program. Again, this one starts on Monday, December 21, and just runs for a couple of weeks. I know this one is almost full. Um, and I'm not just saying that <laughs> to, to uh, increase interest. This really is almost full. However, we will be offering it more in the future. So if you're not able to get in on this one, uh, just keep an eye on your email because we'll be sending you announcements. Uh, make sure you're on our email list. And if you're here, you almost certainly are. But uh, we'll be sending more announcements about future sessions uh, for this. So that is investment. And John, I'm going to turn it back over to you to talk about uh, data science in Python. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. And then just to add on a little bit to what Jason was saying for the investing uh, webinar or the, the program. So we actually had. Uh, a webinar last uh, it was last week or two weeks ago, as, as Jason mentioned. And um, what's really interesting is that of the webinar attendees, the vast majority of students were not planning to do um, some kind of a uh, business finance or econ major in college. And I thought that that was very wise, actually, because first of all, this is a very practical life skill. I'm sure all the parents in this room or this uh, you know webinar will uh, be thrilled for you know their students or their children to be able to learn about investing because it's one of those things that you always wish you had started earlier and uh, you know the sooner you start time is your wealth time is your greatest resource and uh, being able to learn about these things in high school is uh, it's it's such a blessing and uh, one of the panelists that we have as the judges for the stock pitch competition uh, he's a Georgetown. MBA grad, um, worked for Johnson & Johnson. Uh, now he's gonna be a foreign ambassador. He's, he's got his fantastic resume. But he was saying, uh, as he was learning more about this class, he's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that 15 year olds are gonna be learning this when this is something I didn't learn until my late twenties. Yeah. And um, this is someone again, who went to Georgetown for uh, his MBA. And so, it's, it's really quite remarkable that uh, we're, be, we're able to offer this program for you. And when you get to college and you're trying out for those uh, very competitive internships uh, with major uh, consulting firms and investment banks and uh, you know, hedge funds, if you can say that you know how to do a discount cash flow model and you know about the time value of money and all these other terms that uh, you're gonna learn about in this class and also how to use it and apply it, it's game over. You know, there's, there's no, there's no, nothing that, um, there's nothing stopping you from, from getting to that next level. And so we, we're really excited to give students the tools that they need to get that next leg up because really uh, that's something that we, we always strive for a lead. It's not just getting you into college, but helping you to be successful once you're there. So that's just a little uh, more about that uh, fundamentals of investing. And yeah, that program was so popular. We actually had to open a second section for it. Um, and that second section is almost full now. So if you are interested in doing it this winter break, then definitely um, you know, reach out to, uh, to the branch. Okay, so going on to our next program, which is data science in Python. So, so many of you guys are uh, probably interested in computer science or engineering, and uh, you're wondering, well, you know, what can I do to show colleges that I'm serious about that skill? Um, this is a great class for you to be able to demonstrate uh, that interest. And um, especially for data science. And data science is not specific to coding. It is a very, very applicable skill set for so many different industries. And so if you're interested in data science and it's growing your skill set, then this is a, a great program. So I'll tell you a little bit more about it. 
Um, you're going to be working with professionals from uh, top tech companies. Our instructor for this class is actually uh, working at Zoom, and we all know how Zoom's done in this past year and how much they've exploded and grown. Um, but you're going to learn how to write code in Python programming language and author your own data set analysis. So I think what's really important to know about all of our lead programs is that you're going to walk away with something in hand, something tangible, a tangible deliverable that you can show colleges, um, show interviewers saying that here, this is what I created, this is what I did. Uh, it's for students grades nine through 12. Um, you're working with uh, you know, top professionals, learning different types of data formats and how to use them in Python, as well as um, using process, data processing and visualization using the Python library. Now, I'll be honest, I am not a coder or a programmer, neither is uh, my friend Jason. So uh, this is, if you guys know what this is, then you know how important it is to have these skills, right? Um, and we created this program with you in mind. Um, you're gonna author your own analysis um, on a previously taught data set. So it's not, we're just throwing you in with no guidance, but we're gonna walk with you each step of the way. You're gonna get hands-on experience and this is the, the, st the stuff that you love to write about in your college essays, because um, I can even tell you right now, one of the questions that the UCs will ask you is that, how did you pursue one of your academic interests outside of the classroom? And this is a perfect way to answer that question because you not just are telling colleges, I wanna be a computer science major, or I wanna be a data science major, but you're showing them yep. why it is that you wanna do that and that you've already tried it. And you even have, a greater understanding and certainty for that. Um, there is a prereq of a basic working knowledge of Python. Um, if you don't know Python and you want to learn, we have a separate class just for Python. That's actually a four credit class uh, that you can take AP Computer Science Principles or AP Computer Science A um, to, to learn that, that skill. Um, but uh, that's something that you need for this program. Another coding program that we have is hands-on web app development. So with hands-on web app development, you're gonna learn everything you need to know to build a web app from scratch. And you're gonna finish the course with your own website and a certificate of completion, which is common for all of our lead programs. Um, this one's grades nine through 12. It's hands-on for Windows or Mac users, um, for people who are trying to study CS and uh, wanna build a web app from the ground up. Um, and you're going to learn best practices with real world coding tools like Flask, Framework, Bootstrap, GitHub. Um, finish the course with your own website and have resume information and personal content. So you're, we're essentially teaching you to create your own brand. And so just to um, show you guys what this looks like, this is a website that uh, one of our students um, created. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up for you. But uh, essentially, that's, that's one of the projects that you need to do in this class. You need to create um, your own website. Jason, is that showing up for you on your end? Yep, we're seeing it. Okay, perfect. So this is one of our students. Uh, he created this website. Um, it has a lot of his like personal projects. Again, this is like a digital resume. And this is something that colleges can look at instead of just you know everything else that students share. And um, also one of, the, one of the key components of this class is teaching students how to code and create their own chat channels. And so if you wanted to create like a forum or a discussion page on your website, um, you can do that and, uh, and invite other users to come and uh, be able to, to create codes. And so uh, this is something that they, they learn about in their class um, and how to code this. And again, this is another thing that you can put on your resume, uh, showing colleges that, hey, I coded a chat function web app on my own website. You know, how many students can say that to show tangibly what it is that they um, are interested in and how they've uh, demonstrated that in other ways. So that's, again, that's the hallmark of, uh, of LEAD, which is we're always trying to have you walk away with something tangible to show colleges. Um, so that's a hands-on web app development. Uh, Jason, if you want to take it away for the the next program. Great. Yes. Next up, uh, we have uh, a program that's quite a mouthful. Uh, it's called, we call it the Intellectual Colloquium and Essay Competition Workshop. Uh, another one of our most exciting uh, new new programs. Um, so according to a, 
a 2020 Independent Educational Consultants Association survey, uh, intellectual curiosity exhibited through reading, research, and educational pursuits ranks among the top qualities that colleges look for when they make college admission decisions. Uh, for As you can see on the screen here, um, a Stanford supplemental essay prompt from this year says, uh, the Stanford community is deeply curious and driven to learn in and out of the classroom. And then it asks you to reflect on an idea or experience that makes you genuinely excited about learning. Is that something you're prepared to answer, uh, you know, right now? Uh, this year's Princeton supplement asks students to include your favorite book and its author. Uh, Columbia similarly asks you to list the titles of publications, websites, journals, podcasts with which you regularly engage. Um, and the University of California asks students to think about an academic subject that inspires you and then describe how you have furthered this interest inside or outside of the classroom. So schools are looking for uh, intellectual curiosity. That's one of the top things that they're looking for. But what is the best way um, for a student to investigate complex ideas and, uh, you know, build a reading list that's impressive to colleges and display that kind of intellectual uh, curiosity. Um, so this is an int our intellectual colloquium, which, by the way, if you're not familiar with the word colloquium, uh, basically, it's just another word for a conference or a forum or a gathering of academics where ideas and theories are discussed and debates happen. So that's exactly what the purpose of, of our intellectual colloquium is. It's to provide a forum for student intellectuals to do just that, to encounter relevant and important college level ideas that they can discuss, debate, and write about. Uh, so it's specifically designed to help high school juniors and seniors build and display intellectual curiosity, to check that box on your college applications. Um, in the program, students read stimulating books just like they would in college to build an impressive reading list and expand their minds. Um, by the way, the books you're reading in, in English and US history uh, and stuff like that, those are great, but they're not gonna set you apart because all of your peers are reading the exact same things. So if you're looking to, uh, you know, if you list a book that is a common high school level textbook in your favorite books on the Princeton app, that's probably not gonna get you where you wanna go. Um, so in it, with the intellectual colloquium, that lets students read challenging books and articles from Stanford and UC Berkeley reading lists, uh, recommendations from the New York Times and the New Yorker and NPR, uh, books that if you list them on your app to Princeton, Stanford, Columbia, uh, UC, that's going to make the schools lean forward and really take notice. So uh, each program module confronts societal conversations. Um, the instructor provides historical, economic, and political and social context uh, when it's necessary. Uh, but one major takeaway from this program, this is what John was talking about, the, the, the tangible thing that you take away is the each of the modules uh, concludes in students writing, uh, writing an essay and submitting it to a prestigious essay contest. Um, like uh, uh, the New York Times essay writing contest or the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards or a CFGL contest, something like that, which gives students who participate in this an opportunity to basically qualify for and win um, a, a challenging contest um, and participate in that. And either way, whether you, whether you win it or you don't, that's something you can for sure put on that college application. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to gain invaluable experience uh, that can be incorporated in college applications and essays, uh, like I said, win potential awards, and it's going to give you that personalized curated reading list uh, based on student interests that you can put on that application and answer those supplements with and talk about in your college interviews. Um, it's, it's really going to give you that leg up. So a really impressive way to do it. Uh, this it starts uh, the new session. We've got, we break this into modules. Uh, the new session starts on January 15 in just a couple of weeks. So if you're interested in ideas 
And here's a hint, if you're interested in attending a top tier school, you'd better be interested in ideas. Uh, the Intellectual Colloquium is a awesome program for you. Uh, the new module is called Immigration, Emigration, and Diaspora. Starts on January 15. Uh, go to the, the page on our website, Intellectual Colloquium, under Extracurriculars. Sign up for that. Uh, we would love to have you. Um, let me just roll right into our next program, Math Competition Club. Uh, the, the lead math competition club is uh, a middle school. We, we actually break it down into two different sections. Uh, we've got a middle school section, which we call our, uh, our uh, lower division, and an upper division, which is high school, grades 9 through 12. Um, math competition club helps top math achievers in middle school and high school prepare, specifically prepare for challenging math competitions. And along the way, it gives them the analytical experience and problem solving skills that they're going to need to excel in school and prepare to succeed in high school, college, and throughout the rest of their lives. So our uh, upper division, uh, grades nine through 12. Um, yes, so these are, I just hit these points. Uh, helps you build foundational and advanced math skills. This for sure helps you strengthen your college, your high school resume and build an undeniable college application. Um, and this is actually taught by uh, our expert math instructor, uh, Mr. Phil Mann. Um, Mr. Mann is a graduate of Haverford College and UCLA. Um, he's been an elite instructor for more than 20 years. He, he's got so much teaching experience. And he also happens to be the head of our uh, curriculum development uh, department. So he is, uh, yeah, he's, he's an he's a extremely qualified, uh, I was about to call him a genius. He's real close. <laughs> if, if he's not, I think he is. Uh, so that we divide this into uh, upper and lower. Um, the upper division competitions, if you're into math, these are competitions you've heard of. Uh, the AMC 10 and 12, uh, that's coming up in February. Uh, the, the, if you sign up now or in the next few weeks, we're gonna get you prepped to take that AMC 10 or 12, and that's gonna look fantastic on your college application if you do well on that. Um, American Invitational Math Examination, or AMI, uh, the USAMO, and Caribou Math Competition. I think Caribou Math, uh, just that just finished, but there's new ones coming up as well. Uh, so uh, the lower division, similarly, uh, for students in grades six through eight, uh, that prepares students for the AMC eight, uh, which is a awesome way to set the foundation to really excel uh, in on the AMC 10 and 12 later on and is impressive in its own right. Uh, for MOMS, uh, Continental Math League, the Math Counts Competition Series, as well as the um, uh, middle school level Caribou Math Competition. So uh, we have programs starting, we actually do have, oh, I didn't add this to this. Let me back up a little bit. If you look on those white boxes over there, we do have a winter break version of this, just a very short four day uh, winter break math competition club program coming up starting on Monday, December 21, 23, 28, and 29. Um, that is for, that's specifically for upper level. Is that correct, John? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. That's just for high school students. Um, however, for middle school and uh, high school for the um, lower and upper levels, this is an ongoing program that you can join anytime. If you are interested in uh, joining the winter break program, high school students. Uh, again, that starts on Monday. So call today. I believe there is still a little bit of room for this. Uh, call us at 909-444-0876. Um, and you can let them know that you're interested in the winter break program or in the regular school year program. You can kind of join this anytime you like. All right, John, talk to us about screenwriting. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so we have a, just a few more programs to go over with you. Um, and by the way, one thing I want to challenge you with is if you see a program and you're like, why would I want to learn more about screenwriting? Like, I'm not going to become a director. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, do anything related to uh, media or entertainment. One thing to remember is that colleges want students with diverse interests, right? Um, if you're trying to fill a class of computer science majors, 
finding students who have, you know, done computer science, A principles, gotten fives on their exams. Um, maybe they created an app, maybe they created their own website. Like those are all great things. And we want you to pursue those things. You have to have those things to, to even like be in the conversation. But that's gonna be something that so many other students with that same interest have. However, how many CS majors have written their own screenplay about social justice or about um, you know, current events or about uh, maybe it's autobiographical, right? Um, how many students who are trying to become pre-med have uh, done something similar as well? And it's, it's something that you can do to help yourself stand out. Again, don't be a princess, be Batman, right? That's what we talked about earlier. And uh, one of my students, I can tell you two years ago, uh, he came to us and he was a superstar, superstar student. I'm talking, you know, valedictorian at his school, uh, close to perfect scores on his SATs, fives and 800s on all his AP exams and subject tests, and number 10 in the nation for Chem Olympiad. So this guy was hardcore, like STEM, and he had a lot of things to show for it. But what made him so interesting was that he actually had a huge and abiding interest and passion for the arts. Every weekend, he would go to a different museum in, he lived in LA, so all around LA, he went to all these different museums because he just loved art. And that's what we really focused on for his college applications. Not that he reads chemistry textbooks for fun or that uh, he placed you know, top 10 in the nation for Chem Olympiad, but that he at heart is an artist and he has a really fine appreciation for the arts. And uh, that's what really helped him to stand out. He got into Stanford, he got into UPenn, he got into um, Brown's uh, PLEMI program, which is the, the BAMD program, uh, which is where he is now. And um, yeah, it's, it's just something that helped him to set himself apart. Um, and so screenwriting is one of those programs where even if you're not planning to become a writer a screenwriter, go into media or entertainment, having your own screenplay, which is really what this class is focused on, um, can really help you to stand out. And so Screenwriting Workshop, it is uh, designed by an award-winning screenwriter. Um, he has uh, he's Emmy award-winning, Peabody award-winning, you name it, just a really long resume. Uh, and they're gonna teach you the different aspects of screenwriting as well as collaborating with other students to write that original screenplay. And the best part is at the end of that program, you are going to enter your completed screenplay to a contest um, where you're gonna be judged and where winners will be chosen. And the really cool thing about this program is that we're partnering with the leading open source screenwriting program uh, around, which is called openscreenplay.org. And they have a system set up where once you submit a screenplay, Producers, directors, um, big box offices, they're able to go into this huge database of screenplays. And if they choose yours to write or create a short film or a movie about it, then you're actually gonna be given royalties on your production um, you know, for as long as that's being used. And that's, that's a really, really cool model that they've built and that's why we partnered with them. Um, and so you're gonna do everything from starting your screenplay, developing characters, building the story, telling it in scenes, writing your script, and of course, entering competitions. And the next session is gonna start in February, 2021. And I actually just wanted to show you guys really quickly um, what that looks like. So this is the, uh, this is the website, openscreenplay.com. Um, I started one screenplay just to show you guys, Fast and Furious 47, um, since they're just gonna just keep pumping these out for the franchise. And what's really cool is you get to really create your own screenplay. This is not just some Google Doc that you're going to open up and try to uh, you know, type different scenes into, but you're actually using this state-of-the-art software to create your own screenplay. Everything from um, adding the characters. Um, my character is named Mr. Fast. His character flaw is that he's just too fast, right? So this is why you need to take this class. Otherwise, you're going to write stuff like this, which is no good. But if you take the class, then you're going to write much better things, right? Um, you can build out the story, act one, act two, um, you know, beginning, middle, end. And then the cool part is at the end of it, 
you're going to have an actual screenplay. So this is the first place winner from our screenplay competition from last summer. So we had a lot of students go through this program last summer and the first place winner, this is their screenplay. It's a short, it's uh, I think in total, it's meant to run anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So it's for a short film, but it's so cool. Like they have everything that a screenplay should have, characters, dialogue, um, and everything is automatically formatted because of the state of the art uh, platform. So we're really excited. Um, you know, we're just waiting until one of our students make it big. Um, and uh, you know, that's, that's, that's super exciting. But again, you don't have to be a director. You don't have to be a writer. Anyone who just has a mind for creativity and loves storytelling, that's the perfect person for this type of program. Um, and again, it'll help you to really stand out from, from all of your peers as well. So that is the uh, open screenplay. Anything you wanna add to that, Jason? Uh, no, sounds great. It's, it's, that's one I wanna take myself. <laughs> awesome, okay. So next program we have is Art of Photography. So Art of Photography is exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's learning from an experienced photo artist, a professional photo artist and Yale graduate um, on how to develop a vibrant uh, portfolio and develop yourself as a photographer. And by the way, you don't need to have photography experience to do this program. You just need to have an interest in, again, the arts and creativity. So we're gonna teach you the fundamentals of photography. Um, you're gonna learn from a, a, a master teacher. You're gonna learn the basics of Photoshop, uh, which by the way, I don't know if you guys know, but Photoshop and graphic design, those are one of the top nine skills that have been identified in terms of great skills to have for the future. So Photoshop, knowing how to work spreadsheets in Excel, writing, these are all very useful skills, not just for getting into college, but um, beyond in your career as well. And of course, there's always that deliverable for our lead programs. And this one is build an impressive photo portfolio in just eight weeks. Um, and so who is this for? Of course, feature art majors. So to display your artistic passion, curiosity, and get dedication to your craft, but also STEM majors and any other major like English, you know, business, something to add depth to your application with that artistic pursuit. Again, kind of reminding you of uh, what my student was able to do with uh, his interest in medicine and in science, but what made him help stand out is that he was able to show that artistic side. And that's really what helped him to, uh, to stand out. And then um, let me actually bring up a, a sample of the photography portfolio that uh, some of our students created. So I can share that with you as well. Because I was, I was really impressed with what they were able to do in just uh, eight weeks. Um, so these students, they created their uh, photography portfolios and they were able to uh, put them together. And these were the winning submissions. Um, and again, these are students who have not taken any kind of a photography class before. Um, but uh, this student uh, did some self-portrait, autobiographical, like artistic takes, um, as well as, uh, you know, I, I should probably not comment artistically or critique these because I'm not an expert by any means. Um, but uh, yeah, just showing her interests as well as um, her artistic style or her approach to photography, right? Um, which is really cool. And then another one I liked uh, was this student, he did some more like nature photography and uh, more of a natural setting. Um, I think uh, uh, his theme was um, up close. And so he focused on like macro shots and capturing the detail uh, in everyday things. Um, so I thought that that was really cool as well. Um, so again, eight weeks, you're going to have a finished photography portfolio to show off um, and again have something really unique and tangible on your application that you wouldn't have otherwise. And the last program, I know we're almost there. We're almost there. Thanks to everyone for uh, uh, being so patient as we, uh, as we get to the, the finish line. Um, the last program is actually one that is very uh, near and dear to my heart, um, which is Fundamentals of Board Game Design. Fundamentals of board game design. So this is gonna come off as a shameless plug, but uh, 
I am a board game designer myself. Um, of course, working with students is my passion and I love uh, working here at Elite. Um, but on my free time, I, I helped create this board game. Um, and uh, this, this is something that we're providing as a class because we were thinking, you know, there's so many students out there that must love playing games as well. Nowadays, board games are maybe a little more rare, but uh, gaming is definitely on the rise. So if any of you guys are interested in going into video game design or even like, you know, manufacturing and production, this is a great way for you to get your toe into that field. Um, and because board games are analog, they have physical components and pieces and um, it doesn't require any coding or programming. It's a great way for you to learn the mechanics of a game as well as the storytelling and story building aspect of a game in order to um, get your feet into that industry. And so uh, we created this program uh, for students who want to design their own board game in eight weeks. It's being taught by my very good friend uh, and co-founder Rob Chu, uh, creator of Rival Restaurants, which we kickstarted and we've had um, almost a million dollars in sales to date with 25,000 copies in circulation. Um, and uh, you're gonna learn how to collaborate with others to build a fully functional board game prototype in just eight weeks, um, as well as how to pitch your game to publishers and learn how to enter independent exclusive competitions. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, imagine that when you're applying to college, you can say on your application, I created my own board game and it was kickstarted and funded successfully. You know, that's, who can say that? That's 16, 17 years old applying to college. And again, if you're going, trying to get into game design, um, this is a great way to get your feet wet without having to, to build a whole uh, video game from scratch. So this session is going to start on January 15, um, and uh, we're going to be limiting it because students are going to have to work in small groups to create these games and compete against one another. Um, but that's just the newest addition to our uh, lead program portfolio. Um, and this is just the beginning. We're just getting started. I know that uh, we had a whole webinar full of new programs, but Elite, our goal is to help you. Our goal is to help you prepare for um, your future. And so we created all these programs so that you can gear up for that college application and show colleges that you're serious about what you want to do. Um, and just to add, all students who attend LEAD programs are going to get this Certificate of Achievement um, sponsored by LEAD and CFGL. And this is going to be, again, something that you can put on your college applications because so many students, when they apply to college, they may have the grades, the test scores, they may be in clubs and have service hours, but having actual accomplishments or achievements or placing in a competition, that's actually a lot harder than you think. Um, so to be able to say that you won first, second, third place, best speaker, best presentation, um, you know, most potential, most upside, those are things that we really wanna empower our students with so that you have really great things and tangible things to share on your college application. Um, so this is the, the end of the, the seminar, uh, the webinar. These are the three programs that are starting on Monday. So if you want to get the most out of your winter break and you were interested in research, investing, or preparing for the AMC math competition, then call the branch right now because uh, these programs are gonna start very soon and we don't want you to miss out. Um, so uh, yeah, just please uh, go ahead and reach out to them. and. Also, um, we have a poll here that we're gonna go ahead and launch right now um, because we wanna be able to, and Jason, if you can just get that up, that'd be great. Um, because we wanna be able to uh, you know, thank you for uh, attending today's webinar. So if you participate in this webinar and this poll, just check off the programs that you are interested in learning more about. And we're going to send you an exclusive $50 uh, lead program discount um, just for tuning in today. Um, so we do thank you for taking time out of your Saturday morning, uh, spending it with us to learn more about these programs as well as about extracurriculars in general. And uh, yeah, we'd be really happy to, uh, to thank you um, for your attendance by uh, sending you that discount certificate. All right, um, is there anything else, uh, Jason, that you wanted to add? 
Uh, no, I think we I think we covered covered it all. Uh, we're getting a lot of interest uh, in. I'm just looking at these poll numbers coming in, so I'm um, I'm psyched that you guys are uh, as excited about these programs as as we are. So yeah. Awesome. Very good. Um, so yes, uh, we are recording this presentation and uh, we'll make sure to make it available to everyone who registered um, so that you can watch it again later. And we'll be adding parts of it to our website as well so that people can get a better sense of the programs that we have to offer. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So feel free to, to jump off the webinar anytime. Um, and then we'll be here for a few minutes to answer any questions that come through. So if you have any questions, feel free to chat it to us or ask it in the Q&A, and uh, we'll be happy to address those. But thank you so much for coming today, and have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks, everybody.